Well, I promised a recruiting video, and let's see what I can do. Uh, mostly off the top of my head. Uh, and you kind of understand the distraction if you've watched the uh, cat video I did earlier today. Uh, I am Forrest Post, and this is WVU Football Going Deep. Please share, subscribe, tell your friends, click thumbs up, make comments, and do lots of good things for me. Okay, uh, recruiting. <laughs> Uh, well, it's not exactly news. It's more a matter of rumors and uh, a case of no news is good news. Of course, we did lose um, Quisenberry a few weeks ago to Kentucky. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's unfortunate because I really loved watching his highlight tape. But, you know, Kentucky kid... And if his home school offered, he was going. They did. Uh, so, you know, can't hold that against him or against West Virginia. It's just same thing we'd want out of a West Virginia kid. Now, as you might expect, there are questions about the current recruits after uh, Jordan Leslie was fired. And Chris Anderson over at 24-7 uh, Sports has been uh, keeping track of some of the responses. Uh, not a lot of them are responding. They're kind of occupied. Uh, nobody has said they're leaving. That's the good news. Of course, they all talked about how great a person Leslie was. Uh, some said they were shocked. But in general, it's their position coaches that they're focused on. And several did specify that it is Coach Neil Brown that has them coming to West Virginia. So, of course, yeah, uh, losing Brown could make a bigger difference. But hopefully, well, I hope that's not going to happen. Um, so, we, okay, yes, we are still likely to lose you know, a couple of recruits. We've got signing day coming up in just almost exactly a month, uh, December 4th. Shortly after that, the transfer portal opens for 30 days or thereabouts. Uh, we will likely see action in the transfer portal, not as much in previous years, but you know, there are some guys who've been on the team for a while and have not worked their way up. Those are the ones that, well... <laughs> Uh, you expect to lose, and you know, kind of hope if you're going to lose anybody, that's the ones. It's unfortunate, though, that some of the guys that you really think are going to be stars just never quite work their way up, and we usually don't know why. Now, on the rumor side of things, and this is really the most interesting part, and will anything come of it or not, I don't know. And of course, I usually don't dabble in rumors, but you know, these have some interesting aspects because they're not just out of nowhere uh, and they're not without basis. But uh, we had uh, two recruits that we were very interested in. Uh, Wilnerson Kalamak, defensive lineman, and I think, you know, he was one of the top three uh, West Virginia was after. Uh, now they did sign two of the top three eventually. Brandon Caesar took a while. Uh, but Telemach committed to Wisconsin, good defensive line school, and uh, I think maybe one of the places that he had been hoping would make an offer, but he has decommitted. Uh, seems things weren't working out between him and Wisconsin, so recruiting is open. Is West Virginia still interested? Nobody has said yes or no, really. Uh, we did sign Evan Powell uh, after uh, became apparent that we weren't going to get Telemach at the time. So will we add an additional defensive lineman? Will we drop one to add Telemach if he says he's committed? Again, um, none of that is clear. And we also have you know the 105 roster limit next year, not just scholarship limit, roster limit. 
And how that is going to work out is really still a mystery to just about everybody. And will, of course, depend partly on the transfer portal. Um, but Telemach would be a good get. He's not essential. And of course, unless somebody leaves. And to be honest, we probably at this point need uh, an experienced transfer lineman if we could get one. We're going to be brilliant in terms of talent on the defensive line next year. But man, are we going to be short on experience this time around. Um, now, Vester Renan should be back after a medical red shirt. So that helps. He'll, he'll be the experience anchor. But the talent we have this year needs, you know, another year to develop. Most of them would be moving up to be the second, you know, uh, second level. Now, instead of playing 10 plays a game, 8 plays a game, they'd be trying to move up to 20 plays a game. Uh, and uh, right now it would be Vester Renan, Russell, and Redwood as the experienced players and likely starters, with Gabriel and McIntyre pushing for uh, playing time. Of course, McIntyre is talented as all get out, but he'll be coming back from an injury. Hopefully gets to play a little bit this year. Uh, but defensive line can use some experience. Okay, there's the short way to say it. On the other side, of, well, actually same side of the ball, uh, Dwayne Galloway, who is just a top, top cornerback, uh, visited West Virginia a lot during his recruiting, including a number of times he didn't really have to. Uh, you know, team, you know, guys from his team came down for, I think, you know, like a seven on seven uh, tournament, and he came with them just for the heck of it. <laughs> uh, and basically spent the day with the coaches. So that. You know, looked good. He eventually committed to Purdue. I think it was primarily due to a, uh, or the assumption was that it was because he had a relative on the team. Wasn't all that long before he decommitted. And I don't know just what happened. Of course, yeah, they don't tend to say ever. But it's another situation where hasn't really been a lot of talk um, just the, you know, with both of these guys, West Virginia seemed to, I'll tell him, actually verbally committed, silent commit, and then flipped. Um, uh, and Galloway looked like, you know, West Virginia was his second choice, at least as far as I could tell. Um, so now both of those guys are floating out there. Uh, Galloway, I mean, we've we've got a lot of corners coming in, but Galloway would be a take regardless. He's, I think, listed as one of the top 300 players in the country, not position, overall players, and uh, you know, top five or six, something like that in Ohio, which is not exactly a bad football state. So that's the uh, reactions and rumors. It's where we stand on recruiting with yeah, just about 30, 31 days before signing day, when it all becomes just a little bit more official. Well, <laughs> we will see what happens. And of course, some of that will likely depend on what happens with these last four games and what happens with Coach Brown? Uh, Coach Brown goes, I don't think we get either of these guys and we lose a ton of others. And kind of start, not from scratch, but really starting over, which I'd rather not do. I think we can put this together. Um, <laughs> kind of a mystery, but puzzles can be fun. We just have to hope that the coaches are good at the puzzles. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't watched my 
a desperate plea on the cat video, please do so. Um, and uh, I'll beg you to go watch me beg. Okay, guys. I'll be talking to you later. So long.